What is up, everybody? This is Terrell Thorellius here with a brand new segment that is going to be called TV Show Reviews. I will be reviewing seasons of some of my favorite shows, old and brand new. Today, I will be talking about the new season of Search Party that now airs on HBO Max. Search Party is a dark comedy show that focuses on four friends. It all started with the search of finding an old acquaintance and the events that takes place after the person is found. It has been over two years since the show last premiered on television due to changing networks and everything. And no more talking. This show is a really good show. And if you haven't seen it, then you're missing out on a lot of things. I like it a lot and this season right here was really good and it's it started off how it ended before like it picked up on where it left off and everything and here's how it did season three takes place immediately after the events of season two but before we got there we saw a future scene of dory somewhere what it, what i assume was a prison with a buzz cut and everything, looking to press, and she asks, "How did I get here? Like, how did it, how did all of this happen? Something like that." And then we go back to season three of Dory in handcuffs, being escorted to the police car, and she realizes that she has the tape in hand that someone basically exposes everyone on the tape: Dory, Drew, Portia, and Elliot. Basically making them all there whenever Keith got killed. And somehow Dory was able to destroy part of it. And Drew, he tries to escape the U.S. He tries to leave the U.S. without being captured. But he ends up getting arrested. But luckily, both of them were able to get out, of bail, get out on bail. But to different situations. Drew because of his family being rich and Dory because of a friend helping her out and for the friend's daughter to serve her as to help her out to beat this case for Drew. And so what happens in the 10 episodes of season three was pretty good. Like it was I was expecting the show to be somewhat of a letdown after two long years of not being on the air but i was so glad that i was wrong and then in another episode elliot and portia they get caught by the police and they get interrogated and this is where i say probably like the first big thing happens in season three where we see portia being forced into a given a confession basically spilling all of the beans on what happened that day and to make things even worse for Drew and Dory is that she signs a confession and has to testify against the two, basically almost cementing their fate of being guilty. And that drives a huge rift between well, between the three. And we find out on who snitched by the end of season two on who gave that tip to the cops about what happened with Keith and it was basically Portia who told but she wasn't the one that told the cops it was Portia she told another person and then it was a fat white lady who like give who like gives people food at the dance place that Portia goes to she was the one that gave the tip to the police and that was why Dory and Drew both got arrested. So it was basically Portia's fault of why the two got arrested. And they were officially charged with murder. And what happens through that is insane because Dory is always faced with paparazzi in this season. She can't go nowhere without being spotted. And one of the most disrespectful moments of the season would be at the gym when the person that's doing the treadmill next to her spits on her and forces her to get out of the gym. That was beyond disrespectful, to be honest, because 
If a person did that to me, we we would be fighting because spitting on somebody is very disrespectful. The cast, all of them was back, especially Sean Tall. Nobody wanted to mess with her this season. Like she was an outcast like the previous season before. And she ends up getting arrested by the end of the season on a whole bunch of charges. So I don't know what her fate is, but I know it's probably going to be explained in season four. What surprised me the most was that we did not see a whole lot of Julian in this season. He was there, but he wasn't there with the whole cast, with the whole gang. And he he got off lucky, too. In this season, Julian was given $750,000 of money to get out of town because of what had happened in the previous season due to him receiving photos and losing his phone. And he never talks to, I guess, to none of the friends, to none of the people. And he sees the news, which I assume he was in Brazil, seeing the news of what's folding. Dory tries to stay calm in this season she tries to tell herself that she's innocent, even though she is guilty. Drew tries to stay calm in this too, while they're both on trial. And they have a huge fallout by the end of season three because Drew basically calls out Dory for all the things that have happened because of her and how she seems somewhat of like a sociopath. And the trial itself was pretty insane. Like the first day of trial was pretty horrible. Drew throws up and Portia, she gives her testimony, basically saying that they were the ones that they did it, that they killed Keith. And I would say in episode nine, one of the biggest pieces of evidence that basically almost has them both convicted was the audio. Remember how I said that that tape was somewhat like destroyed? Part of it wasn't. And whenever it got replayed, it kept saying different things. Murdered or pancake. Murdered or pancake. And it divides the whole courtroom. Some believe it was murder. Some believe it was pancake. And by the end of that episode, freaking Dory fires her lawyer. And even she said that it was freaking murder. And I was kind of glad too, because the lawyer, the actor herself, she was not bad. It was just her voice that really like annoyed me of how she was talking. She acted like a rich girl snob and everything. And one of the most confusing parts of the season was the stalker. Like the stalker just came out of nowhere. Like, who was he? How does he know Dory? Like, why was he getting a tattoo of her name on his fingers? Like, why was he so obsessed of, with her? And I don't remember of there being a stalker in the previous seasons. So hopefully there will be answers in the next season. And the trial, it continues. And the whole cast, the whole four friends, they're somewhat back on good terms after Elliot's um, wedding ceremony takes a dark turn for many reasons. And that will probably be with Portia getting knocked out and almost sacrificed alive by freaking rats while being covered in honey because of Dory's stalker getting a hold of her. And Elliot does not get married because the person that he was supposed to get married to gets cold feet and he he goes ghost. We never see him again. And he makes a surprise return to his family members, his real family members in this season, because in one of the episodes, one of the lawyers who's trying to convict um, Dory and Drew, she basically exposes his whole life and how it was a big lie and how his parents are not his real parents, but they're paid actors. I didn't even know you can do that, which is really, <laughs> I did not know that was even possible of doing, but it really is. And so 
he visits his family and they are all somewhat on good terms by the end of the season because when the verdict comes in, everyone is shocked, especially Dory, when it comes back that all of them are not guilty of killing Drew. And <laughs> before this happens, um, April's sister, you, you remember April, the girl who got pushed off at the boat by the end of the season two, she finds out that Dory was the one who kills April. And she tries to prove to everyone that Dory did it by what April had written down in a notebook. But due to of it being written in a language that only her and April knew, no one believed her. Everyone thought she was crazy. Everyone did. And so we go to the final scene of the season three and it's Dory at home and she hears a noise and she later ends up getting kidnapped. She ends up getting, I would say, sedated slash knocked out because the stalker reappears out of nowhere for what happened. He was hit by a car and during Elliot's wedding, but he somehow got away and he kidnaps her. And we go back to the very first scene of season three where she asks what happens how did she get here and it's because he was recording a video of her while she's dressed in all white has a buzz haircut and is chained up with like 15 to 20 different chains all around her body it was freaking insane and it looked like she was somewhere in a lot like a storage lot or like a abandoned building or something i don't know and the very last shot of her just looked at very depressing. Like she just looked at depressed a lot. Like it seemed like she was she's in like a deep state of trouble. And so I would say for season four of what is going to happen, I would say that the gang will find out that Dory's been kidnapped and she's missing. And it's going to be up to them to find Dory, but probably the stalker is probably going to test them a little bit. He's probably going to challenge them and make it not easy because he wants something with Dory. And the and all the unanswered questions that a lot of people might have will most likely be answered in season four. Like what happened with Chantal with Chantal? Like is she in jail? Like, what's going to happen to her? And will Dory be charged again with April's murder if things happen? Like, I don't know how to explain it. And that is it with this review. I am so sorry if things may seem out of place. For the later reviews, I will do a better job of how things will be. And if I would have to rate this season out of 10... I would give this season a good nine out of 10, like a, a really good season. And that is all I have to say. And until next time, later.